Some will ask, why did it have to take you falling out with President Mugabe and uh, his backers in the party uh, for you to get out of ZANU PF? Why wasn't the um, you know the atrocities of the 1980s the uh, final straw for you? Wasn't why wasn't uh, the successive elections that were disputed and quite frankly in a number of instances it was said that they were rigged. Why was that not the final straw for you? Why was the violence of 2008 not uh, the final straw for you? The violence of 2008, that should have shown the world that I voiced against what happened. And do you know the worst of th such you know, practices happened in my province and near to my home? And I grouped people, I held a rally, denounced that because as a leader in ZANU PF then, they went any single day when we sat to discuss about such practices. And my question at that meeting was, who and where gave that order? And why give an order to kill people in a province where Mugabe himself had won resoundingly, when most provinces had actually given him less votes? That what was my question. What answers did you get? They who who was responsible the for the 2008 violence? Persons I don't know, but for sure it was ZANU PF killing MDC supporters. But to come up with direct perpetrators, that was never made. But in your own um, constituency, Mount Darwin North, you, surely you should be able to talk about the violence there. Mount um, Darwin West was no violence. Mount no, Darwin West, yes. No violence, and that can be vouched. No violence no whatsoever. No violence. I've never the spoken neighboring, about violence. The neighboring constituencies neighboring were you Neighboring constituencies away? of Mount Darwin, yes, in Mount Darwin South, in, in um, where Kasukwere is, as member of parliament, yes, people can vouch for that. But so see, who was responsible there? It's your neighborhood. Surely you should know. Ah, uh, no. You should I, have taken interest. I, of course, you, when you ask who directed that those things happen, and no answer is given, and you end up being labeled liberal, you are labeled, and uh, all sorts of gossip is created, you can imagine. That's what made them think that I was not part of them. But people will then say you were comfortable to ask at a rally about who's responsible for this violence, not getting an answer to that, but you were more than comfortable to continue in a government that basically was elected off the back of, you know, violence that was on a really large scale. Why not leave at that point and say, I cannot continue to be part of this? I am not an ordinary person. I fought for the liberation of Zimbabwe. And we had some beliefs that should have been done for the people, for the country. And waiting to really see those things being done and single-handedly, you try and introduce programs that should be the basis for people to value that party which fought for the struggle. And amongst yourselves, people go after them to destroy them and not to make them successful. Really, it was something that one would know that there was a struggle within a struggle within ZANU-PF. But even, even now, you can see, after being chucked out, was there peace? And why is, it, why is it that it's worse than before? You can see that I wasn't the problem. They were the problem. I was trying to bring peace, which peace they refused. How much personal responsibility to, did you take uh, as someone who was at the highest level in government for about 10 years or so? How much personal responsibility do you take for some of this malaise we're talking about? Uh, this malaise, no, personal, I did not partake them. I did not participate. Mind you, my responsibility was to do with social ministries. I wasn't responsible for the army, for the police. Neither was I responsible for economic development ministries. No, I was responsible. Even when um, I was senior to, to, to John Nkomo, I was you know, made to remain manning social ministries. Did you confront President Mugabe about, about some of these things, for instance? Yes, in cabinet, yes, I, I used to, we used to discuss even during GNU. Some GNU opposition members will tell you who and what I was saying, even in cabinet, which is uh, my What answers secret. would you give for such things as uh, Operation Mrambatrina, which, you know, it, it appeared to be a program where he was saying he wants to clean up, but the social effects of that 
uh, you can still see even to this day in, in the livelihoods. I remember seeing a report that was talking about the number of, um, you know, uh, children that are, are born uh, from parents who were affected by Mrambatrina and, uh, you know, relocated to areas where, you know, they... But if they, uh, uh, but a lot even, of those children have died even without my Even without my being part of the, of the system, have they stopped destroying people's, you know... Uh, but did you hold him accountable, President Mugabe? Did you did you have those conversations, those hard conversations with him about what when was happening came, in the country? When it came, when those things came, they were discussed. They were discussed. But you know what? Being a head of state, he will have his own answers to, you know, make sure that that thing is made move. But for you, this thing has been the practice all the time. Only a few months ago, others, as I speak, they are. Sit, is, you know, you know, living as squatters on Mashingo, South Africa Road, where they had built good houses, yes. for, according to the standard. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, why did you leave them to build, to construct homes to that level, and you only uh, go to destroy them when they are already, you know, you know, you know, you know, houses which can, you know, carry value for those poor people. It's, it's, it's interesting. I saw in, an, in another interview you used the example of uh, Paul, the biblical Paul, going from being Saul and uh, having that Damascus moment and, and converting to Paul. Is that what you are asking Zimbabweans to uh, view you as, as someone who has had a Damascus moment? Actually, I'm saying to myself, for how long are we going to be discussing these things? Are we discussing them so that they will continue to be, you know, hateful? to those affected, or we should now be looking for answers? For how long well, is the world going to be asking Joyce Mujuru, who has shown them, who has told them situations and moments which they can also vouch for, that even during that time, this is how I used to differ with them. This is how I carried the title liberal. Why being a liberal during the period when such things are happening? A lot of the people who were victims of some of these things will say it's, it's, it's simply not good enough for you to say you raised these issues here and there and you attracted the label of being a liberal for it. You did not fight for Zimbabweans when you were in a position of leadership in the country um, to actually stand up and fight against these things. Would you, you believe Some it? will say you were complicit you by your silence. Would you believe that as, as I'm speaking here today, with what is happening even up to today, they are ZANU people, persons, who are actually working with us. Who do you believe that? We are who in are still pain. We are, yes, we are at pains. Mind you, there is a lot that was lost in order to achieve the independence of the country under ZANU PF or under ZANU. And it was not easy to just let go such things for people. And it's a pain that the questions that we were asking as freedom fighters, we were calling these very same people water that protected the fish, the fish which was us. And why is it that we are going against those people? This is not it. And we cannot continue to support such a thing. Are you sorry for some of the things that happened? Are you willing to personally apologize? I know that you've been asked this question quite a number of times. You know, it's, it's terrible, it's bad, and the apology to me it's not good enough, but to show them that you are concerned by doing better and the opposite thing that people will say, aha, I'm sure she meant it. And that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm leading people first. And I've committed both resource and time to make sure that this party pronounces itself to the expectation of the people.